This is Sunday School Lesson for February the 16th, 2020. The scripture text for this lesson is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. Background chapters or scriptures is Psalms 40, 1 through 10, 16, and 17. Starting with chapter 6, verse 9. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. The phrase, Our Father in Heaven, indicates that God is not only majestic and holy, but also personal and loving. The first line of this model prayer is a statement of praise and commitment to hallow or honor God's holy name. We can honor God's name by being careful to use it respectfully. If we use God's name lightly, we aren't remembering God's holiness. The phrase, may our kingdom come soon, is a reference to God's spiritual reign, not Israel's freedom from Rome. God's kingdom was announced in the covenant with Abraham, is present in Christ's reign in believers' hearts, and will be complete when all evil is destroyed and God establishes the new heaven and earth. You can refer to chapter 8, 11, Luke chapter 13, 28, Luke 17, 21, and Revelations 21, 1. When we pray, may your will be done, we are not resigning ourselves to fate, but praying that God's per perfect purpose will be accomplished in this world as, as well as in the next. And how does God accomplish his will on earth? He does it largely through people willing to obey him. This part of prayer allows us to offer ourselves as doers of God's will, asking him to guide, lead, and give us the means to accomplish his purpose. When we pray, give us today the food we need, we are acknowledging that God is our sustainer and provider. It is a misconception to think that we provide for our own needs ourselves. We must trust God daily to provide what he knows we need. God sometimes allows us to be tested by temptation. As disciples, we should pray to be delivered from these trying times and for deliverance from Satan, the evil one, and his deceit. All Christians struggle with temptation. Sometimes it is so subtle that we don't even realize what is happening to us. God has promised that he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Ask God to help you recognize temptation and to give you the strength to overcome it and choose God's way instead. For more on temptation, see chapter 4, verse 1. Continuing with chapter 14. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Jesus gives a startling warning about forgiveness. If we refuse to forgive others, God will also refuse to forgive us. Why? Because when we don't forgive others, we are denying our common ground as sinners in need of God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness of sin is not the direct result of our forgiving others, but it is based on our realizing what forgiveness means. See Ephesians 4.32 It is easy to ask God for forgiveness, but difficult to grant it to others. Whenever we ask God to forgive us for sin, we should ask, have I forgiven the people who have wronged me? The Lord's Prayer is not simply a masterpiece to be put behind a glass in a museum. It is not to be kept unopened and pristine on a bookshelf. 
Jesus' prayer is intended to be a model prayer. As such, it teaches the manner in which his disciples should pray. For this reason, the prayer remains a wonderful resource for the church. It can be prayed as recorded in the text, and it can be studied as a pattern that teaches how one to be concise and orderly in praying. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Having ended the model prayer, Jesus digs deeper to ensure that his listeners understand the implications of the fifth petition. See Matthew 6, 12. One item of clarity introduced at this point is the use of the word trespasses in place of the word debts used earlier. The Greek word translated debts can be construed as referring only to monetary obligations, as in Romans 4, 4. The word translated trespasses, however, unmistakably refers to sin in Ephesians 1, 7, and chapter 2, verse 5, and Colossians 2.13. Receiving and extending forgiveness are inseparable. To experience the forgiveness of God, our hearts must be prepared to forgive others, Mark 11.25. Forgiveness of sin is essential to the church's identity as implied in the words of Jesus at the Last Supper. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Matthew 26, verse 28. The church should be a forgiving place, encouraging both the receiving and extending of this act of grace. Ephesians 4.32 and Colossians 3.13. When we come to the point of realizing how much God has forgiven us, our forgiveness of others will be natural and easier. We forgive as the scripture requires us to do, harboring no anger or grudges against others. Verse 15, But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus ends with a warning. If you bypass step one of forgiving others, don't expect step two, the Father's forgiveness. Don't miss the point. This is not some sort of bargain we are making with God as though he must forgive us if we forgive others. It is a request, a plea to God to help us have a spirit of forgiveness. Forgiveness, like love, is hard. See Matthew 5.44, Luke 6.28, Acts 7.59 and 60. We need God's help and he's just the one to give it. Matthew's text of the model prayer has been prayed by Christians since the earliest days of the church. It's a simple prayer with the introduction, seven petitions within four cuplets, and a closing pronouncement. Each element teaches about God and how to relate to him in prayer. Jesus' teaching shows us how we can access our prayer lives. We need to access the knowledge of God as our Father who loves us and gives us what we need. In that light, we need to be completely honest before him, concerned about his will and power and not our own standing with others. Moment by moment, we need to rely on him to provide what we need for life and for spiritual wholeness. When we pray for the coming of the Father's kingdom, We pray for the coming of a king. When we proclaim the kingdom of heaven, we proclaim that God is king. The Christian message is the good news that God is king and the king has come to save us.